Hello, today let's look at basics of the topic of permutation and combination without using the term permutation and combination. That means we'll be talking about principles of counting or probably extending logic just to try solving some questions of permutation and combination. Say for example, if I talk about the principle of counting, keep the jargon aside, let's try playing logic. Say for example, if I say I have four ways in going from one destination A to destination B. And then there are five ways in going from B to C. If there are three ways from going from C to D, that means for a particular given diagram from A to B it is four ways, B to C it is five ways, C to D it is three ways. A simple question could be how many ways can I go from A to D? If I talk about how many ways can I go from A to D, applying counting, a to B, I can go in four ways. So if I pick up any one way, I still have five ways in going from B to C. That means so far, if I cut short the problem from A to D, I say from moving from A to C only. If I move from A to C, four ways from A to B, five ways from B to C, it's just a simple multiplication. There are people who generalize by saying that if there is an and I have to multiply, Let's try applying that here. If I say I have to move from A to B and from B to C, I have to multiply from A to B and B to C. That means 4 into 5, that is 20. Simple. We don't really need to jargonize it or formulate it. It is just simple multiplication by the fundamental of counting. If we move in further and we say A to B was 4, B to C was 5, C to D was 3, that means it is 4 into 5 into 3. Logical, simple, easy. I put in that smaller application here and say how many ways can I go from A to D and come back on a different route. For now I have to apply. I say from A to B was 4, B to C was 5, C to D was 3. If I have to come back from a very different route, I cannot take that one route which I used from going from C to D. That means I have two ways to come back from D to C. Similarly, if I don't use that one way from going from B to C, I have four ways to come back from C to B. Similarly, three ways from coming back from B to A. So the answer would be 4 into 5 into 3. So now we have reached D into 2 into 4 into 3. We have reached A back from a different route. This was a simple multiplication problem. If we look at another problem, we will be able to generalize this also by using that word AND. Say for example, I have two caps with me, four shirts, three trousers, two pairs of shoes, four pairs of socks. If this is what I have and I have to wear one of each. If I put it in a simple terminology, I have to wear one cap and one shirt and one pair of trousers and one pair of socks and one pair of shoes. That means it is 2 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 4. One of each. If at all I say that I am going to a temple and I will need to get my shoe off. So if at all I think that wearing a shoe is not compulsory. If wearing a shoe is not compulsory, I can actually go ahead, multiply everything that is the number of ways of wearing everything. Keep a shoe aside and multiply everything else. If I just add up these two, that will be the number of ways. This is layman's because this is one example where a nicer shoe is not compulsory. If I just go ahead, extend the logic from shoe not being compulsory, socks not being compulsory, cap not being compulsory, I cannot go and make all the possible combinations of a shoe where I am not wearing a socks and a cap where all the three I am not wearing, where I am wearing all the three, I am wearing two of them that will complicate the whole case. Rather, let me think more logically and say if there were two pairs of caps, there is one cap, there is another cap. Wearing a cap is not compulsory. That means I could have picked up the first cap, I could have picked up the second cap or I would not have picked up a cap. So for the same cap, there are three ways of using that cap. That is n plus 1. Similarly, if I say there are two pairs of shoes, 
wearing is not compulsory that means there are three ways of wearing a shoe now if i go back to the problem where there are four shirts three trousers two pairs of shoes four pairs of socks and two caps wherein i say shoes socks and caps are not compulsory i will add one to each so the final answer will be 4 into 3 where it was shirts and trousers multiplied by 3 for shoes multiplied by 5 for socks and multiplied by 3 for caps that is how we will extend this logic principle counting we have still not started applying permutation and combination per se but these kind of questions do come up in entrance exams if you look at another question a very simple one probably for a notorious student if for example you are a notorious student and you have 10 questions all of them having a yes or a no as an option if you are not in a great mood and you are not prepared how many possible answer keys can you make that means how many possible ways can you answer these questions simple logic says the first question you can answer in two ways either a yes or a no second one you can again answer in a yes or a no so when you consider the first question there are two ways second also two ways third also two ways now if i ask you the question wherein i say out of these 10 questions how many ways can you answer these questions such that you answer all the 10 questions it is simple 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 10 times that makes the answer as 2 raised to 10 similar extension of logic wherein i say there are 8 questions out of which 5 questions are 4 options and remaining three questions are six options calculating manually would mean four into four into four into four into four for the five questions which had four options multiplied by six into six into six for the three questions that had six options in it so overall it is four five times and six three times multiplied this is also an application of simple counting if i extend this application into a practical problem wherein I say in my folder I have five rock songs six Carnatic music songs three indie pop songs okay how many different albums can be formed using this wherein I have at least one rock song and at least one Carnatic song now when you think of it this is more like a two option paper only each of the songs rock song or a carnatic music or an indie pop can either be selected or cannot be selected so that is more like a yes or a no based question number of ways in which to select these five rock songs will be 2 raised to 5 6 carnatic songs 2 raised to 6 3 indie pop songs 2 raised to 3 this is the total combination if there were no other additional conditions given but here the condition is given is that there should be at least one rock song and at least one Carnatic song if there is at least one rock song that eliminates that one option of not having a rock song in the composition that means 2 raised to 5 was the total combination out of which one rock song is out that means 2 raised to 5 minus 1 that minus 1 is what we did for a 2 raised to 0 where there is not a single rock song is selected that is just one way possible similarly if I say there should be at least one Carnatic song that is 2 raised to 6 minus 1 that 1 is the way in which I will select no Carnatic song going back to the question 5 rock songs 6 Carnatic songs and 3 indie pop wherein it should contain at least one rock and at least one Carnatic means 2 raised to 5 minus 1 into 2 raised to 6 minus 1 into 2 raised to 3 that makes it 31 into 63 into 8 that is 15,624 ways I am very sure we didn't think of an answer close to that anyways as far as practicing is concerned sincere practice of counting can, can really help you tackle all these kind of questions best of luck